Did you know that computer production in Cities Factory can totally exclude oil and plastic? And today's blueprints will do exactly this. Welcome to Cities Factory Blueprint Only Challenge. Challenge where I use only blueprint factories to beat Satisfactory. When update 8 for Satisfactory released on Experimental, I have decided to make a new save and use only blueprint factories. Once I have the ability to place blueprints, well, everything prior to tier 4 need to be replaced, and everything beyond that need to be constructed as a blueprint. No standalone machines, unless it is miner, pump or transportation. That means that I need to be extremely creative when planning my factories and use a lot of alternative recipes in places otherwise I won't. I have already covered multiple blueprints in previous videos on this channel, and today I would cover blueprint pair producing 18 computers per minute. Better yet, with a single flip of a power switch, this blueprint have the ability to swap between computer production and production of crystal oscillators and circuit boards. Full production chain use total of 9 stacks on an aligned manifold. And bottom and top blueprints feature very easy and user-friendly connection between each other. And after I will share and show my computer's setup, I will also share my personal storage blueprint factory for electronics. This simple 4x4 blueprint includes production and storage of quick wire, silica, quartz crystal, circuit boards, AI limiters and even high-speed connectors. So today you will be covered not only with computers and crystal oscillators, but with every electronic item prior to super computers. As always for my blueprints, everything is labeled, alternative recipes are listed in the blueprint descriptions, and I will discuss production chains and provide production schematics. So even if these blueprints are not your jam, you still can apply knowledge of this video to your own personal factories in Satisfactory. First, we need to start from top of production chain and see what is the best recipe, well, for the computer production. And straight out of the box, we can see that standard recipe is extremely power and efficient. Both alternative recipes are way better. Standard computer recipe is the worst recipe that you can just imagine. Even if you forget about power, it is still utilized like thousands of screws, plenty of plastic and a lot of cables. Each of these materials is not a pleasant thing to handle with Mark IV belts. And to be honest, even with Mark V belts it's still rather bad. On the other hand, we have alternative recipes. Crystal computers use quartz crystals as one of main components for production of crystal oscillators, which is basis for computers itself. Meanwhile, Caterium computers use mostly Caterium as one of main components for quick wire as basis for the computers. So which one is better? Machinery-wise, crystal computers may seem more compact with the final assembler assembly, but this is not the case since it still uses manufacturers for production step of crystal oscillators. Debate about what is better, Caterium or Quartz, is rather exciting. But there is a main benefit of crystal computer recipe, and it is potential lack of oil in the production chain. If we are using oil, we are limiting the amount of places where this factory can be erected, or simply we force ourselves to make an extra transportation. And setting up oil in itself is way more time consuming than other types of factories. So this is why crystal computers is the best choice for way more flexible computer factory. So now we will need to go down the production chain and see where we can optimize item production prior to the final step. From the start, it is very obvious that I will not be able to fit everything into single 4x4 even with stackable manifold in mind. The decision was made to split crystal oscillator production with manufacturers out of from the main blueprint. Manufacturers are quite big and my main deciding factor was to overclock or not to overclock the rest of the blueprint. So it was either 3 or 2 manufacturers per stack. And with three manufacturers in mind, basic production rates was forcing me to slightly overclock two machines to match the appetite of manufacturers. Sounds not a lot, but if you consider computers as the key component for the late game, it will add up really fast. And well, we are using the manifold, so it will definitely add up. And I already knew that I will be using exuberant amount of power shards for my fuel setup. And well, by the slight overclock I also meant that it would be less than 10%, which is well a waste of a power shard. Power shards are a renewable resource with Lizard Dog of Farm, 
but I was still short of this option in my safe. So the decision was made to go with two manufacturers per stack and have no overclocking in the bottom blueprint. So far, it was rather abstract decisions and well they were based on future knowledge and situational awareness. It will make more sense once you see the amount of machinery in the first blueprint and now we actually need to consider well the concrete limitations of our belts and machinery. How many stacks we can stack with tier 5 level of technology and mark for belts. As you remember previously, we want to avoid oil in our setup. Crystal computers is just not enough, and we still need to deal with circuit boards. By default, circuit boards use plastic, but we can use silicon board recipe and tap once again into quartz. Compared to crystal oscillator production, silicon boards are using fraction of quartz and this is not a big deal. Well, there is an argument to be made about using cheap silica alternative recipe, but we have limited space and I was not really in the mood to add an extra manifold just for the limestone and well, we will need to house assembler or a silica constructor. So where efficiently actually makes a huge sense is in the production of quartz crystals. If we will use pure quartz crystal recipe, we can save up 30% on raw quartz. And while global supply of quartz may be not an issue for majority of players, there is another benefit. We can simply produce more quartz crystals from full mark for belt of raw quartz. With 480 unit capacity in mind, we can finally see a reasonable limit to our computer stacks. And with two manufacturers per stack, this number would be 9. We cannot produce more than 18 computers per minute on a single manifold. If you want to do more, well, we need to run second belt of raw quartz. Now you see the full production chain, but well, if you want to make the blueprint, we need to simplify this back to production schematic of the single blueprint. We can totally see that we need to fit total of one refinery, one foundry, six constructors and two assemblers into a bottom blueprint. Why I do not want this machinery to be an a top blueprint? Well, it is pretty simple, it will just add extra connections and actually a lot of them. And let's avoid this. Another benefit of silicon board recipe is that we can use copper that we already use for the cable production. And for the copper ingots itself, it is natural to use copper alloy recipe and actually I really wanted to go with a pure copper ingot recipe since we already input in water, but fitting second refinery into 4x4 is kinda a nightmare and eventually you'll need to do like more than 300 water per 9 stacks. And I do not like mark 2 pipes for the numerous reason and running like 2 pipes of water, uh, I don't know, it's just messy, so yeah, foundry and copper alloy recipe. Alright. Now let's address the elephant in the room, where we will get 45 reinforced iron plates per minute for crystal oscillator production. My answer is very simple, we will just use one of my blueprints for production of 45 reinforced iron plates per minute. Here I have version for 90 plates per minute, but this is only here because well I will have second production side for computers. I will be including all the variations both for 45 and 90 plates per minute. Producing reinforced iron plates on the side is not really compatible with manifold nature of this computer blueprint, it just makes more sense to make reinforced iron plates in one single compact blueprint on the side and then to make the manifold for the computers itself. So now we have solid idea of how theory works, but we still need to deal with several challenges with boots on the ground. Welcome to the house of pain! When I started designing this blueprint, it looked quite different. It was horizontal, and it can sound kinda great at first, but then you realize that you need to connect like 4 or 5 belts inside of each stack, and then you need to design the convenient access, have internal lightning, walkways, etc, etc. Really awful idea. And then I realized that we have conveyor belt elevators. They actually can quite easily snap to wall conveyor outlets. And not only this makes it easier to operate than belts itself, we can totally just make it into the exterior connections. This way, we can totally turn very convoluted setup into something that can be done in 8 clicks from the outside. 4 elevators needed for input of reinforced iron plates, cables, quartz crystals and to output the crystal oscillators itself. In between blueprint stacks we also have small accessible walkway accessible from the frontal gap and all you need here is just to connect the belt manifolds, water pipe and power. Don't forget to use Mark IV belts. Also there is a simple power connection to a top blueprint. And at this point you probably can notice that there is another feature of this blueprint. With a single strategically placed power switch we can turn off crystal computer production and get output of crystal oscillators and circuit boards. So how it exactly works? Basis is very simple with crystal computer assembler sitting on a separate power chain B. But redirecting the flow of crystal oscillators and circuit boards is a bit more complex. 
Here we can totally split production output to crystal computer assembler and secondary outputs. When assembler power is off, machine will not intake resources and they will continue to flow into secondary outputs. But once you turn the power on, crystal computer assembler start to use those resources. Issue here is that normal splitter that still splits output of resources 50-50, and this will just deprive crystal computer production of those resources. This can be fixed by placing a smart splitter. This smart splitter overflow setting set to secondary output, it will ensure that first, your crystal computer assembler get all the resources and only then it will flow into secondary output. And the last option will obviously only happen when your computer production is disabled and not consuming any resources. Alright, so now we have the computer set, but then we have all these like annoying parts that we will need to play satisfactory at this point. We need Caterium wire, like for the upgraded power poles and outlets, then we need like AI limiters for the smart splitters, we need silica and quartz for the windows and LCD screens, and finally we will need the high speed connectors for even more advanced electronics. While it was tempting to make some of those into separate blueprint factories, in reality, heavy use of them is only necessary for the nuclear power plants and some of the final space elevator parts. For personal use, we can totally make 4x4 blueprint with every single one of them inside. And here is a schematic for so-called electroencubulator. Looks a bit daunting, but it is rather simple. We cannot make well quickwire without Caterium, so here is that. And if you want to use circuit boards, we also need to once again use silicon boards to avoid oil and plastic. We want the quartz and silica in this setup with, well, a natural pick, because we are already inputting the raw quartz. And there is like very uneasy pick for the high speed connector recipe, and both standard and alternative recipe are actually viable, but alternative recipe produce exactly 3 high speed connectors and with the production of 6 circuit boards we can just split it into 50-50 and have 3 circuit boards and 3 high speed connectors per minute. It's very nice, clean and easy split and this is why I just set well AI limiters to 3 per minute as well. And the rest was pretty much dictated by the machine capacity like in the case of quartz crystal with a single constructor. As always, everything in the game is labeled to the best of my ability. And if you never exported blueprints, you will need to do this manually. You need to go to your system disk, users, your username, app data, local, factory game, saved, save games, blueprints. There your game session would create a folder once you have blueprints unlocked in your progression and have created first blueprint. Every blueprint consists from two parts, .sbp file with parts and items and .sbp cfg file with text description and color settings. Quick note that my blueprints are done in update 8 experimental and they will crush on all the versions of Satisfactory. The link for the blueprints are down below in the pinned comment and next time around I will actually cover my arms factory that produce everything to fix the nature and let your factory grow. Wait, what was that? <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, <laughs> have a nice one and Yakus out.